my name is Craig Adkins, and I am the head of photography, and so I'm out in the field most of the time doing the major shoots and, and working with the camera in, in different locations. My name is Alex Mercer. I am the post-production coordinator and lead editor of the Mercer Media Technologies. I do most of the 360 uh, stitching, I uh, work with clients, and I also come up with the final product. My name is Tony Fernandez. I am a camera operator for Immersive Media. Uh, we went to, out to the middle of the desert. We went to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, uh, which I would guesstimate is probably about a 45 minute drive from, from the strip proper. No, maybe half an hour drive from the strip proper. Having the cars out there, uh, burning tire, you know, on the tarmac, it got, got a little warm, but uh, our camera system held up pretty well, so we were happy about that. Out in the middle of the desert, what can I say? It's, it's the most god awful. <laughs> A bright environment for a camera to be in. Middle of the desert, uh, you know, hot sun, no water. One of the most brutal environments you can possibly, uh, you know, uh, be in on, on the earth. We had the timing set up pretty nicely for early in the morning and, uh, and we, we had everything all set up and we were there ready to go um, right at the crack of dawn, right as the sun came up. We, we studied the, uh, the sun charts for weeks and had it down just right. Uh, one of the other things we were concerned about with that location was kind of the arc and movement of the sun. We were supposed to be shooting in the morning time and uh, the sun you know, as it comes up over the top of the stadium and the bleachers, uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna directly shadow some areas and it's just gonna blow out other areas. And we were really concerned about having the cars drive through the shadows into these blown out stretches of, uh, of raceway. Yeah, with our camera system, with all 11 uh, cameras functioning at the same time, um, exposure can be a real tricky thing. And uh, especially when you're dealing with the changes in light. Um, so we were able to use a manual exposure mode um, which helped us dial down the exposure down into to, to compensate for the brightness. And um, it, it worked out quite nice. Um, I think that um, if we'd been in the auto mode, uh, the camera was being whipped around so much that it would have changed the orientation to the sun quite a bit. And it would have probably affected the exposure negatively. So I think out of this we were able to get a really consistent exposure as a result. Apart from the actual cameras being placed on the car, a number of cameras were also placed on the track. And so we had to figure out where to put the cameras to give the user uh, a feel of speed. fastest parts that you feel are the, are the turn, that's because of the gravity, but the same thing holds true for a picture. And so most of the, of the really tight turns is where we decided to place our cameras, and this gave us not only um, that feel of speed that we want, but also a, a more 360 view. You could view the, view the cars a lot longer, you could follow them around the track, and, uh, and it really turned out for a great picture. The riggers uh, from LA were, were pretty stymied at first as to how we were going to be running the camera, but very quickly it became clear that we could get it down um, through the, their rigging setup in through the, the, the wheel well. We actually ran our cabling through the wheel well and we found a really great dead channel up in there and I think it even surprised them to, to find such a great and easy uh, trip for the cable. So in order to have all these individual lenses kind of meld up and work together, uh, what we need is for the camera to be sitting in such a position from the car that it's far enough from any hard lines on the car 
but also that it's close enough that uh, we can capture the driver, we can see uh, what he's doing in the car, we can see the other car next to it, without having uh, what we call parallax, where the car gets too close to two of the individual pictures coming together. Uh, we got real lucky. Our riggers worked uh, extremely hard. I was able to actually set up a tripod, uh, run tests of what, the, what it would look like from a tripod, and have them recreate that tripod in the form of a steel structure on the front of the car to the centimeter, to the millimeter, right there. Um, we got it within a degree of twist. We were able to take that um, aspect of our job that's usually the toughest, and it turned out to be very easy putting it onto this car. The two of us worked together for a while um, and actually uh, we had to adjust our camera just exactly right to match the corners of the car so that they would uh, come together and be, you know, nicely put together in the 360 environment. And uh, so they were able to set up a rigging that took our base plate and allowed them to move it exactly to where we needed it. And then they locked it down and, it, and the, two, the two technologies married up perfectly. Our technology is cutting edge. There's no other company out there that does what we do and so with you know new car technology from from uh, Mercedes coming in it was it was a natural fit. I think it's fairly accepted in the world that Mercedes represents the highest level of technology available in the automotive industry and, uh, and our camera is by far and away the, the Mercedes of, of the 360 immersive world.